Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, GMAT Review, the official guide, 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 291. Please turn to it, page 291, problem number 169, and today is our lesson number 236. Let's see what it says. Excuse me. It says if n is a, if n is a positive integer, is 1 over 10 raised to n less than 0 0.01. In a situation like this, when we are given an equation, an inequality, an expression, uh, in a very cumbersome, very very tedious manner, in a mumbo jumbo way, it's always a good idea to analyze it in its simplest form. So that when we get to these statements, when we look at the information in the statement, it will make it much easier for us to establish whether or not the information that is given in the state in the two statements are uh, is sufficient. If we can figure out what is being asked in its simplest form, reduce it, simplify it as much as you can. Before you look at the answer, to, before you look at the look at the two statements, so let's simplify it. Point zero one, point zero one here is what we're told. Question is, is this quantity less than that? Let's see what happens here. Which of course, well, let's start with this part here. We know that one over ten raised to the first power is simply point one, and point one of course we know is not less than point zero one. What happens? That's, that's the case if n happens to be 1. What happens if n happens to be 2? If n happens to be 2, 1 over 10 raised to 2, which is same as 1 over 100, which is same as 0 0.01, which we also know it not, it's not less than 0 0.01 because 0 0.01 would be equal to 0 0.01. What happens if n equals to 3? In this case here, 1 over 10 raised to the third power, which is same as 1 over 1000, which is 0 0.001, point, point 0 0 0.001, which is less than 0 0.01. So the question was, is this quantity, is this quantity less than 0 0.01? The answer is, no it is not, no if n is equal to 1. The answer would be no, it is not if n equals to 2. In other words, if n is if n is less than or equal to, if n is n is 1 or 2, we can't say less than or equal to because we're not including the negative part because n is a positive. So if n happens to be either 1 or 2, then the answer is no. Is this quantity less than 0 0.01? We just found out that when n is equal to 1, it is 1 over 10, which is 0 0.1, and it is not less than 0 0.01. If n equals to 2, 1 over 10 squared is just 1, 1 over 100, which is 0 0.01, which is actually equal to 0 0.01. It is not less than 0 0.01. So, if n happens to be 1 or 2, the answer would be no. But if n happens to be 3, if n happens to be 3, the answer would be yes. Yes, if n is greater than or equal to 3. Greater than or equal to 3, because it's an integer. So, we can actually say 2 also greater than or equal to 2, and if it's greater than or equal to 2, it's going to start out with 3 because it's an integer. That's what we have to establish. We have to establish if n is greater than or equal to 2. Oh, it cannot be equal to 2, sorry. It cannot be equal to 2 because when it's equal to 1 or 2, answer is no. So if it's more than 2, like we said, if, if it's 3, if it's greater than or equal to 3, then the answer is yes. That's what we have to establish. Is n something more than 2? Let's see what they tell us. Now that we understand now that we understand what is being asked, now we are ready to look at the look at the two statements. I need the room, so I'm going to raise everything. But it's very important that we understand first what is being asked in its simplest form. So all we want to know is if n if if n is more than two. Let's see what they tell us in the first statement. Well, there you know. What do you know? In the first statement, they actually tell you that n is more than two. So that that's it. That takes care of it. So the question was, is that quantity, the question was, is this quantity 1 over n, 1 over 10 raised to n, is, is it less than, is it less than 0 0.01? The answer is yes. There is no doubt about it. 
The answer would be yes, we can give a definitive answer, yes or no, because we know n is more than 2. If it's n is more than 2, then it's, it's going, it has to be more, it, this quantity has to be less than 0 0.01. Because if n happens to be 3, if n happens to be 3, it's 1 over 1000, which is 0 0.001, which is less than 0 0.01. If n happens to be 4, it's even smaller, and so on and so forth. So the first statement by itself is sufficient. First statement by itself is sufficient. A, D, B, C, E. Now that we know that the first statement by itself does the job, we also know at this point in the story that the answer cannot be B, C, O, E. Let's look at second statement. Now before we actually analyze the second statement, I want to make a couple of remarks here. Second statement is not quite as straightforward as you might think. And when you run into a situation like this, where one statement is more cumbersome than the other, the thing to do is to analyze one statement, whichever is easier. It doesn't have to be first statement. You can analyze the second statement first. Analyze the statement that you find easier, narrow down your ask to 50-50, and then if you don't have the time, or if you feel that it's too cumbersome, you don't know what to do here, it's just too tedious, too, too complicated, Skip it all together. Skip the one of the two statements. Narrow down your answer 50-50. Take a chance and just move on with your life. You understand? You have to know when to hold and when to fold. Your goal should be to win the war, not the battles. Do you understand? This is this is a little bit more complicated. I'll tell you why as we as we go through the process. Before, but before, in order to understand why this is a little bit more complicated, let's start with something simpler. Let's start with something simpler. Would you agree? Would you agree that one over one hundred? is less than 1 over 10. Of course, why wouldn't you? Would you also agree would you, would you, would you also agree that 1 over 100 can be written as 1 over 10 squared? Of course, 1 over 100 can be written as 1 over or 1, over, 1 over 10 squared. So let's write it here. 1 over 10 squared and this can be written as now what we are told, what, we, what is drilled in our, in our head all the time is that as long as the bases are the same, we can compare the exponents. That's what we are told. For example, if somebody tells you that 5 raised to x is more than 5 raised to 3, then we are told that as long as the bases are the same, we can conclude from here that x must be more than 3. x will have to be more than 3. Something 5 raised to, 5 raised to 4 is going to be more than 5 raised to 3. 5 raised to 3.1 is going to be more than 5 raised to 3. So we can conclude from here that x must be more than 3, as long as the bases are the same. That is the mistake people are going to make here. That is what makes this thing a tricky question. People are just going to compare the bases, and by comparing the bases, in your haste, you might end up saying that 2 is less than 1. Which, of course, you wouldn't do it, because this is so simple, you will immediately see the insanity in it. 2, of course, is not less than 1. But what's going on, what's going to go on here is this part. People are going to convert this point 1 into 1 over 10, which you're going to write it like this, and in their haste, they're going to say n minus 1 is less than 1, which is not true, as we just found out. We cannot compare the exponents if the thing is written in a fraction form. Let me give you another example to make you understand. Let me give you one more simple example. 1 over 4. Would you agree that it is more than 1 over 8? Let's, let's do the more than part this now. 1 over 4 can be written as 1 over 2 squared. And this can be written as 1 over 2 to the third. And we know that 1 over 2 squared is more than 1 over 2 third. 1 over, 1 over 2 raised to third. Again, in our haste, if we assume that this base is the same as that base, we'll end up saying something insane like this. We'll end up saying that 2 is more than 3. We cannot do that. We cannot do that. Unless this thing is not written in fraction, we have to get rid of the fraction part first. So what we have to do here is, we cannot leave it as 1 over 2, we have to write that as 2 raised to negative 2, and this one we have to write as 2 raised to negative 3. And now, and now it is proper to say that negative 2 is greater than negative 3. Now it is proper. But we cannot compare the exponents if the bases are written expressed in fraction. We have to get rid of this fraction. Let's do that, shall we? 
Let's do that. That was the hurdle. That was the hurdle that most people would have. So 1 over 10 can be written as 10 raised to negative 1. And outside we have negative 1 minus 1. And n minus 1. Which we are told is less than 1 over 10. Which again we'll write that as 10 raised to negative 1. Now that we have gotten rid of the fraction. Now the bases are the same. Base of 10 both sides. Now we can say that negative 1. Negative 1 times n minus 1 must be less than negative 1. Let's multiply both sides by negative 1. Let's do, let's do it on the next step. Let's multiply both sides of this inequality by negative 1. We're going to multiply this side by negative 1. We're going to multiply this side by negative 1. And that is the second hurdle that most people will have trouble under, uh, getting over. Let's see what's going on here. Would you agree that 2 is 2, or rather 12, is more than 8, let's say? Of course 12 is more than 8. What happens if we multiply both sides by negative 1? Would you still agree, would you still agree that negative 12 is more than negative 8? The answer is no. Inequalities are very tricky to handle. When you multiply or divide, an inequality by a negative number, the direction of the inequality has to be switched. Has to be switched. Do you understand? One more time I'm going to say slowly. I don't have the time right now to actually write it down in, in the blackboard. I'm going to say slowly. When you multiply or divide an inequality by a negative number, the direction of the inequality must be switched. This is not correct. The direction has to be switched. Because we just multiplied both sides by negative 1. And the reason we're multiplying both sides by negative 1 is because we want to get this negative. So now negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1. And here we end up with negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. And we end up with n minus 1. Now we add 1 to both sides. We add 1 to both sides to get rid of this one. And we find that n is greater than 2. Which is precisely the same thing what they told us in the first statement and which is precisely what we were looking for from the very beginning, if you recall, the work we did. And now that we know for a fact that n is more than 2, second statement is also sufficient. Second statement is also sufficient. And since both statements individually are sufficient, the answer is D. This was a tricky one. This was a tricky one. Do you understand? I will see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.